right? Um, I want to prove this. This is where I want to end up. Okay, this is where I want to finish. But in order to get there, like that's my last line, I need to start with something that I know to be true, and I don't know that this is true yet. Okay? But what I can do is I can say, well, if I take something that I know based on A and B, which beyond a shadow of a doubt is true, then I'll use that as my starting point and off I go. Alright? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, look, I want something to be greater than something else, and I see a square root in there. Okay? I see a square root. So this is something you're going to get more and more used to as you meet inequalities more frequently next year. Okay? But when I see a square root and I see an inequality, I think squares. Right? The reason I think of squares is because if you take any number, n, right, positive, negative, zero, and you square it, right, doesn't matter what n is, you're going to get something greater than or equal to zero. Do you agree with that? So this is kind of like a, so long as n is a real number, then I can, I can say that this is true. All right? So I'm going to take that as my basis, but I'm going to take a particular value of n, namely this guy. Let me see if I get it right. Mm, yeah. Cross my fingers and see how I go. Okay. Is this what I want? Yeah, I think this is what I want. Okay. Now, when I have a go at this, right, this is true because this is true, right? Um, a and B, both real numbers, therefore, A take away B is also a real number. Okay? So I'm just going to chuck that over here. Okay? Now, so what, you're saying? Okay? Well, I can use this to get from here to here. Right? I've got an A minus B, I want to get toward an A plus B, and somehow an AB is going to appear. It's not too hard to get an AB out of this, right? What could I do to that left hand side? Expand. Just expand it. Just expand it. Okay. Now, so far, nothing too groundbreaking has taken place yet. Okay? But that's all right, we're almost there. I've got an AB, it's over the other side of this inequality. You see that? Okay, so how can I get something useful over the other side? Hmm. Now, I could, add, I could add 2AB. That would be fine. In fact, I'll just quickly write, don't write it, but I could write A squared plus B squared greater than or equal to 2AB. Okay, now that kind of looks a bit promising because you're like, oh, like I could take that, I could divide by 2, right? That, that would be cool because then I have a divide by 2 over there. And I could do some square root business, well, then but then, then you're kind of stuck. Do you notice you're stuck? Okay. Because once I get my square root over here, you put this square root over here, and you have two problems, right? Can you see what the two problems are? Problem number one, I don't want a squared plus b squared. I want a and b. Problem number two, I, um, I don't have a two down the bottom. I actually have a root two, right? So it's like, hmm, okay, that's not quite what I wanted. Not a bad idea though. Another suggestion. Can you add, add um, 4ab squared together? 4ab uh, to the both sides. Okay, now our first suggestion was to add 2ab and we saw it hit a dead end. No problem, what else can we try? I'm going to add 4ab, okay? Now why would you add 4ab? Now it's not obvious, but what I'm actually doing, we have a name for this, right? It's how we got the quadratic formula. I'm completing this square. Okay, that's what I'm doing over here. Now it's a bit unusual because it's already a square, but I'm going to make it a different square, right? Watch. Let's add 4ab to both sides. Can we do that? When I add 4ab to this, it'll become not minus, but plus 2ab. Okay, now if I've added 4ab there, I'll add it over the other side. All happy times, okay? Now you're starting to see this is a much more promising avenue than this one. This one hit a brick wall. Oh well, that's okay. But now over here, what am I going to do to this left-hand side? Unexpected. I, I can factorize. I can factorize. And of course, we ought to expect this kind of factorization because we know where we want to head, right? A plus B all squared. Okay. And that's greater than or equal to... Now, I could write that 4AB over there. But being that I want a fraction, I want that 2 over there, I might as well just in one hit divide through. Are you comfortable with that? So I'm going to end up with AB over there, and that means I'm dividing by 4. Okay. Now, something which I'm just going to, uh, because we're so close, we're so close, 
Um, I'm not going to be too formal with it. When we get into inequalities as a whole topic, I'll deal with it in more detail. You've got to be really careful with inequalities, right? We already know if you multiply by a negative, you can't just multiply by negative numbers. It changes what's going on, right? In the same way, be careful with square roots. Square roots are dangerous things for the same reason that minus signs are dangerous things. Uh, it mucks about sometimes with what's going on here, okay? But suffice it to say for now, because a and b are both real numbers, if I take the square root of this side, I can take the square root of this side, and the inequality is preserved, like this. In fact, I'm just there. I don't need to say anything else. That's the square root of both sides. Now, just to confirm, right? How did I, on what basis did I go from here to here? It's not difficult to think of how this is going to work if all you're working with is real numbers. If I say 25 is greater than or equal to 9, at least it was last I checked, right? I can take the square root of both sides, and it's still true. It's all good, okay? Um, so being that that's the case, I can apply a similar kind of logic here. I'll prove it more formally a bit later on, but it's all I need to demonstrate with no appeal to geometry or anything like that. There's our familiar old AMGM inequality.